All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to move on and and kind of go into a conversation that we've been having throughout this year, uh, all the, throughout this off season. Scott Turner's fired, like we mentioned before, so now we're looking at getting an offensive coordinator. And uh, obviously, we've said some of the names. We talked to you about uh, the Pat Shermers, the Zambezi, um, Thomas Brown, not Thomas Jones of the Bears. Uh, you know, we've got a bunch of these guys in here, but we actually had an interview today with Anthony Lynn. Talk to me about that, Will. Yeah, yeah. So, the you know, this is why I can't stand the sports junkies. Um, they put up, posted a picture of Ron. He's playing at Pebble Beach in the at and program this week, and they said, what do you feel that there's a senior bowl going on and our head coach is out there teeing up and enjoying himself in California? Lo and behold. Ron went up and spoke with the coach of the San Francisco 49ers, who are based out of Palo Alto, which is not that far from, from the Monterey Peninsula. So it kind of worked hmm. out in itself. Maybe that was coincidence, maybe not. Um, yeah. But we, we, we briefly talked about Anthony Lynn as a possibility. Yeah. And one of the things we weren't sure of is if, he, if the 49ers would grant him the opportunity. Um, you really can't block a lateral move. Um, um, so you can block a lateral move. You really can't block a, an opportunity to move up. And so going to an offensive coordinator would um, be a step up for him. Um, so there, there was some some conversations with him. You know, Sean, you and I had some some that piqued our our interest when we when we talked when we heard this rumor last week. You know, and oh, yeah. I looked into Anthony Lynn a little bit, and he was um, he was Rex Ryan's guy when Rex Ryan was a head coach. He was the position that he's in with the 49ers right now as the assistant head coach and running backs coach. He had a guy named like Chris Ivory mm-hmm. doing just fine in, oh, in yeah. the Jets. You know, and who was who Chris Ivory, honestly, you know, right. what he was able to do. And he followed Rex Ryan to Buffalo. Uh, when that ended up, it ended as well. You know, he's been around a few other places, the Lions in 2021, Niners this year. Um, he was, you know, the head coach of, of San Diego and got fired when we all kind of, you know, weren't so sure he, he should have been fired. But so I think he comes with a strong offensive background, a very strong running game background, yeah. a lot of success with the running game. And I think, you know, coming this past year, um, you know, under Kyle Shanahan, who I can't stand, but everyone, you know, anoints him a genius. Um, I think it's good that he, he hopefully learned a thing or two under Kyle and some new hopefully. new ways of thinking in the running game and how the running game complements the passing game, that type of stuff. So I think Anthony Lynn is a very intriguing uh, coaching candidate. I'm excited that we had a chance to talk to him. Yeah, I absolutely love his his history. I love where he's been, the success that he has had. And and it's a solid choice. It's not somebody new and fresh. Everybody wants to get that new, fresh thing. You know, sometimes it it – it, it works to get somebody that knows the system that's been around different organizations. So they know kind of how to fall in line and get a, get a, you know, get a feel of how everything is going. So I'm, I'm e- eager to see, there's a lot of other names out there. We've talked about, obviously uh, Eric bien still playing right now because the chiefs are in the super bowl. That's a name we've been talking about. Uh, Nathan saying Byron Leftwich, he's another name um, that's been kind of out there. Yeah, there's been no contact, it seems like, from the commander. Right. Team. It doesn't seem to have much of an interest. Yeah, we've we've mostly been trying to focusing on who they're actually talking to. Right. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that there's been, you know, as of right now, zero interest in Byron Leftwich. And he was at the Wizards game the other night, too. Yeah, because he's from the area. But like you said, I mean, both parties just might not be interested. Like, not everything works. Not everything fits. You talked about it. Frank Wright was one of the ones that, you know, turned us down. Then sorry. Yeah. And when, now we know, I mean, he's obviously in Carolina. He's not that far, but I mean, absolutely. Like, look, well, let's, yep, let's, Maryland. let's be honest. So why, why is Byron left, which maybe not a candidate? What, what connections does he have to Ron Rivera? That's what, what Ron's he, all about. Yeah, he's all about who he knows. He's all, I mean, we talked about Eric the enemy and Ron trusts Andy Reed. He, he coached, yeah. you know, with, with Andy Reed or he, he's very familiar with Andy Reed. And so it's, you know, I could, you know, Ron could very well call up Andy and say, I'm interested in Eric Bieniemy. you know, is he, can he do a good job with me? You know, that type of yeah. stuff. There's been, you know, bieniemy has got a lot of suitors right now. I think Baltimore has mm-hmm. reached out to him, showing some interest, you know, um, people I think are so surprised that he would potentially leave Kansas city. And they're really mm-hmm. surprised the fact that like, well, this is lateral. He's already an offense coordinator, but bieniemy knows he has to get out of Andy Reid's shadow. 
it is a well-known fact that this is Andy Reid's offense, that you are kind of doing what, what he says. And, right. and, and the enemy needs to, to be getting out of that because he needs his play to do the talking for him because he has interviewed for head coaching jobs before and has not gotten it. He didn't get the Texans job, and everyone thought that last year he was the shoe-in. You know, they picked Lovey Smith. Like, I'm sorry, but that's not that inspirational to pick to me as, as right. a coach. Like, And so if the enemy couldn't get that, there's something going on with his interviews, in my opinion, that are preventing him from getting head coaching jobs. So he needs to get out of Andy Reid's shadow to right. go somewhere. And, I mean, we aren't the best location, and there are people that are concerned about, you know, the, the potential upheaval of coaches. But the enemy may look at this and say, Terry McCorm. Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, Brian Robinson. I can work with that. I come from a system that made a rookie quarterback look really, really good, you know, that can simplify things. I can work with that, you know. So there, there are some pieces out there that we have that someone like the enemy who may only need one year to prove himself, that he could say, I can do that. Washington is an attractive place for me. So you never know. And, and I respect that. I respect that people are, are trying to push for him to get it. He's the, he's a great mind. He's got all this and all that. But I, I don't know. And I've always kind of argued back against that is that he's got a nice little setup. And I get you want to be your own coach and your own man and all that. And that's fine. But, I mean, you're – I mean, I think a lot of it is determined on – well, I've, I've seen coaches leave after they win Super Bowl, so that's not saying anything. But I think it is dependent on that. If we win – if he wins another Super Bowl – why am I trying to go potentially somewhere where I'm going to have to rebuild just to say I did it myself? Like I get everybody wants to move on and be that next thing, but you know, I, he's got a sweet gig up there. And I mean, they're right back in the hunt in the last five years. They've been what four AFC championships. Like they are always at the top. And it is, I just don't know that you'd want to leave that to come somewhere else, but I get it. I get it because that's what everybody does. The next coach, the next guy in line, goes on but I always thought he was smart for staying and right now I mean they're they're still playing in two weeks yeah. you know what I mean so yeah I think there's something funny about those the contract that he's he's been signing he keeps signing one-year deals I don't mm -hmm. know that seems something fishy to me I, I almost wonder if there's something going on there with him and Andy Reid if they're not looking mm -hmm. looking to part ways and I'll be honest I think he's the leader in the clubhouse because mm. why why have we why did we interview Pat Shermer and Ken Zampezi two weeks ago and it's been radio silence since then? Right. Right. I mean, we Ron has done his due diligence in canvassing and he's gotten enough to follow the you know the diversity rules that are out there and diversity opportunities. So if we're still waiting, you know, and it's now Wednesday, we we're now midweek of the the week in between when some of this stuff can happen. Part of me feels like the enemy is the guy he wants. Hmm. He's just waiting for the opportunity. We'll see. We'll see. Because I, I, like you said, we've got a lot of talent. We got a lot of different pieces that you know. You get the right person there, he can definitely set up that puzzle. So I'm down. I, I'm I'm excited to kind of see what happens. You got Nicole saying, "Yeah, Byron left, but you were looking him up." Uh, you said great. I, I don't necessarily agree with this. I think great coaches can make mediocre players great. But you, but great players can make coaches better, absolutely, because you know, some guys are just that great as players. But I think it's the other way around. Uh Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.